hello guys so welcome back to the channel and it's been a while so today i decided to try out react native and see how it compares to flutter in terms of building uis so i decided to build a simple minimal to do app with react native and before i finish i had realized a lot of differences between how these two frameworks approach ui so i would like to take you guys through the process what i found out and why i think flutter is the way so the first thing is i already have um, the setup which is the requirement for working with react native more specifically expo so i created a new project and i'm going to go through the process all over again so a new project and that just give it a name so to do up and i'm going to create in a new window Right. So in this project, if you want to generate a new expo project, you are going to use a command from the docs. So there is the command and this command will generate an expo project with a TypeScript template. So JavaScript by default doesn't have type checking. So I'm going to use TypeScript. And this should take a while because unlike Flutter, which you have the SDK, directly installed on your device when it comes to react native and expo you have to download the files you need all the time from online right from the web so this is going to take um, a little time good so our project is ready and if you check our directory you should see that we have some files generated for us so this is um, the structure of a react native with expo project and you see that over here you have less files compared to a flutter project right now in order to run this project on either android ios or web you have to use any of these commands so first i would like to run this and if i close what i already tried I would like to run this on iOS. So npm run iOS. And this should use expo stats iOS to run my project. So the difference over here is that with a new Flutter project, it does take a while for it to start. But then with expo, because you are using the expo go sandbox, it is really fast. That is only for new projects. Right. So I want to also run this on Android and then see how it looks. Good. So there is our starter template for both Android and then iOS. Now our main app starts from the app.csx file so just like in flutter we have main.dat in expo we have app.csx now from here what i saw is uh, we have view style and then we have some styles over here and if you are familiar with web development and css this should look familiar so my first thought with this was uh, i really liked flutter's way of styling right instead of always define a style style sheets like i mean all the time writing styles individually um, i like flutter's approach to styling much better but i don't want to be doing the style sheet that's great i mean passing styles that container view right so for that one i just i'm used to the flutter way of styling so i prefer that and the first thing i decided to do clear whatever is here right and then start working on my simple to do app because i just gone through the docs and i think i'm good enough to create a simple to do app so i cleared this right and i was faced with this safe area issue where the text was moving outside of i mean the body right in flutter we call it the body so from the docs I realized I could use safe area view from React Native. And after applying the safe area view from React Native, 
it fixed the issue on iOS, but then on Android, we still had our text moving outside of our body, right? So this was an issue that took me a while to solve. And I realized the solution was to use an external package called React Native Safe Area Context. Then I started wondering, I mean, how, why is it that just a simple issue like safe area view is not fixed directly within the framework, but we have to rely on external package. So just after this, I was like, let me just continue with my work. And then maybe I'll, I'll just work on the iOS, right? So I wanted to create a very simple design where we have a text note here and then we have an input field and then with a button right so just here i wrote text and right and i realized that i don't have any concept of abba so in react native we don't have the concept of abba i have to create my own abba i have to i mean you have to do everything from scratch right so notes and i have to style this from scratch so font size right and if i need some pattern i have to uh, add padding here and adding padding here doesn't work on ios but then it works on somehow works on android so that was a bit confusing right just starting off with the note text I, I was a bit confused why the pattern didn't seem to work on ios but then it worked on android and the safe area didn't work on android so that was a bit confusing for someone who is new to react native right so i decided to ignore this and then um, wrap everything with a view right and also if um i enable actions on save so this way i'll have i'll be able to apply the pattern to this view right something like this and then remove the pattern from the safe area so this is what I had on iOS after doing something like this, right? And it wasn't that bad. I just wanted to add an input field over here. And in order to add that input field, within this view, there is a, a widget, right? So something like a component, we will call widget in Flutter. That is called text input, right? And if you put this text input just like this, you don't see anything. So unlike Flutter, that has most of its components or just styled for you. In React Native, you have just minimal sets of components. You have views, you have button, you have text, you have flat list, scroll view, just to mention a few, right? You don't have a lot of components, you don't have bottom sheet. So if you are someone who is not so good with UI, you can't create stuff from scratch, I wouldn't really recommend React Native for you because you have to figure out most of the things on your own. We don't have, most of the things are not designed for you out of the box. So in order to have this text input, first we need to apply some styles. And the first style I wanted to apply is to give it some kind of pattern and still not visible. Maybe give it a width of 100%. And let me check if everything is okay, right? But then we still can't see it, so um, let's give it some border, right? And then I saw it. So it was a bit of work um, creating this an input field compared to something like Flutter, which would have, I mean, be very, very easy. Also, I realized that the input field were very different, right? So the same values, but then they look way different on each device, which I, as a new um, person learning React Native, it didn't really make a lot of sense to me it's coming from Flutter. It's where everything like rendered almost exactly on, I mean, different devices. So after this, I wanted to have a button here, right? Which is an add button. So 
I realized that in Flutter, we just have rows and views and they make lives much easier. You don't have to think about, I mean, whether this is going to be in a column or a row. You just use the widgets and then they define the direction. But over here, we only have view. We don't have the concept of view. So if you need to have things, items aligned in the row, you need to figure it out. You need to just use a view. So wrap this text input in a view. And then tell the view that it should lay its children in a row. And by default, all views move in column. So all views are by default flatter columns, if that makes sense. So unless we come to the style and see the flex direction equal to row. And um, we need to also put justify content space between, right? Again, I wanted to also add an icon button, right? And I realized there is no built-in icon button that I could use. Um, I need to create icon button from scratch. So icon button, and I don't have any icon button, so maybe I need to have an icon. And there is um, React Native Expo Vector icons, which we can use. So we have to import it. And um, if I get a name right, And I'm not looking for the search icon, but I'm looking for uh, the add icon like this, right? And it doesn't look so good. I have to do everything from scratch. So wrap this with maybe touchable opacity, right? And that will give it this kind of button fill. Also, I have to align this. So within this view, align item center and then give it some gap. So maybe gap of 10. And I was expecting the gap of 10 to either create space here, but uh, it didn't. It did something different. So it's different from web, where given gap creates a space between the elements. Right now, instead of gap, I had to use margin here, and maybe margin right of 10, and that still didn't solve it. So I was a bit confused and honestly, this is where I ended, right? I mean, I, I couldn't continue because it was very, very, very difficult getting even the basic concepts. I mean, the basic UI stuff done because the fact that you have to do everything from scratch on your own and then also certain things that are supposed to work, they just work out of the box in Flutter, doesn't work here. These, you're not going to get like, Icon buttons, bottom sheets, they are just not here. Right? They are not here. So it really made the transition so difficult. I, I couldn't build a simple note up. Not because I, I was I didn't have the skill, right? But then the main reason was things were just annoying. Things that worked out of the box in Flutter. You had to um, search, do a lot of research here and there just to find how it works in React Native. So honestly, if you're a beginner and you want to learn mobile app development, I recommend you learn that with Flutter if you want to really, really build and ship apps much faster. If you are looking for a job and you already know React, then you can learn React Native. But if you're a total beginner, the learning curve for React Native, which is uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, React Native. I don't really think it's, it's worth it. Right? So that is it for today's video. And I'll see you guys in the next one.